Thank you for choosing LiftMaster. This video will provide an overview of LiftMaster's motorized barrier gate traffic spike system. We'll also share important information you'll need before and during installation. This video is intended for demonstration purposes only. The procedures demonstrated should only be performed by trained professional installers and service technicians. Safe operation and servicing requires that you follow all instructions and safety advisories found in the manual. To locate a trained, professional installer or service technician, go to liftmaster.com slash locate a dealer. To achieve a successful installation, it is vital to survey the site. Select a location for the traffic spike system that meets the following conditions. Vehicle traffic must travel over the system at a strict 90 degree angle for both the front and rear axles. Do not install the traffic system on a curve. The path of travel needs to be straight for 15 to 20 feet on both sides of the traffic control system. Curves beyond that distance are fine. Traffic must be slowed to a maximum speed of 5 miles per hour to avoid damage to the spikes and to other internal components. Speed bumps should be used whenever possible to slow traffic to the desired speed. Warning signs must be used to warn drivers and pedestrians of the potential danger as they approach the system. In addition to posting a notice for pedestrian traffic to stay clear of the area, pedestrians must be supplied with a separate access opening. Use caution when installing near high pedestrian traffic areas. If there will be traffic after dark, be sure to provide adequate lighting in the area and use the lighted warning sign. Do not install when the road surface is in poor condition or unpaved, or when the surface is on an incline or otherwise not level. The traffic system must be installed on a solid level surface of concrete or asphalt. The location of the operator and the direction of the flow of traffic will determine the handing of the operator you must choose. Face the direction of traffic flow. Left hand operators install on the left side of the traffic lane. This is a standard installation. Right hand operators install on the right side of the traffic lane. This is very important. Do not install a right-hand operator on the left side of a traffic lane. Doing so will result in damage to vehicles. The traffic spikes cannot be modified in the field, so you must order the correct operator for the application. Let's take a closer look at the motorized barrier arm traffic control system. The main components are the operator, the barrier arm, the base with tunnel, the tooth sections, and the warning placard. UL325 regulations require that all installations must have warning signs placed in plain view on both sides of the gate. The optional traffic light. Surface mount systems are attached using epoxy and bolts. In-ground systems are installed in a trench. We'll focus on the in-ground system for this video. LiftMaster offers 9, 12, and 15-foot systems. For wider traffic lanes, a second system can be installed. Prep the installation location with conduit wired for power and any other required controls. Follow national and local building codes. Disconnect power at the source before making any connections. Provide an earth ground rod. Provide 120 volts AC power. For 230 volt AC power, purchase the separate optional conversion kit. Run high voltage power wiring through separate conduit from low voltage wires for controls such as loops. See the manual for details on the size of conduit fittings needed to connect to the operator and base. Now let's talk about the equipment needed to install the system. Teeth sections are available in three foot sections. To install the in-ground systems, you'll need the following tools and materials. Excavation equipment, cement mixing equipment including water, a shovel, a wheelbarrow, and a flat trowel crushed rock. For the tunnel and each three-foot section of teeth, you'll need one yard of 3,000 PSI premixed cement, six to eight open web hollow blocks. The standard size is 8 by 8 by 16 concrete masonry units or CMUs. The use of two sections of flat or angle iron cut into lengths of three to four feet is optional. In-ground installation requires the excavation of a trench. Before excavating, Always check with the local municipality and or utility company for regulations, codes, and inspection of the site. Place adequate warning barricades in the traffic lane to divert traffic during the construction process and until ready to activate the traffic control system. 
Let's look at an operator and tunnel with two sections of the three foot long teeth. Lay out the components and mark their locations on the surface. These components are heavy, so plan to have several sets of hands available to move the parts around. Excavate a trench for the tunnel and tooth sections that is 16 inches wide and 3 feet long for each 3 foot section of tunnel and teeth. Excavate to a depth of 24 to 36 inches deep, depending on the drainage needs in your area. Partially fill the excavated trench with crushed rock to a level that is 12 inches below the surface of the trench. Position the cement blocks as a base to make sure the traffic controller section is level and flush with the pavement surface. Follow the instructions in the manual to assemble the base and tooth sections. To make the installation easier, two lengths of flat or angle iron can be bolted perpendicular to the top plate. These temporary lengths of material will rest on the surface of the roadway, helping the top plate to remain level throughout the rest of the installation process. Once properly positioned on the cement blocks, traffic control system sections will be flush and level with the surface of the existing roadway. When adding the mixed concrete, do not allow concrete to enter the body of the traffic control strips as that will restrict the movement of the spikes and affect drainage. Add the concrete around the perimeter of the strips and in between the blocks. Continue to fill until the concrete is flush with the road surface. For maximum durability and best results, keep all traffic off the units for at least seven days to allow the concrete to cure. At a minimum, keep traffic off of the system for at least two days, depending on weather conditions. Steel plating can be used during the curing time to allow continued use of the traffic lane. Locate traffic warning signs in a location visible to traffic. Complete the installation by setting up the operator. Remove the top cap and the front panel from the operator and set aside. Position the operator on the tunnel assembly. The side with the front panel is called the service side. It should face the oncoming traffic when the operator is oriented properly on the tunnel. Secure the operator to the tunnel at all four corners using the supplied hardware. Follow the instructions in the manual to complete assembly and wiring of the operator. This includes attaching the barrier arm, routing the chain, connecting power wiring, and wiring accessories such as the optional traffic light. For more information, visit liftmastertraining.com.